Hey everybody and welcome to the Gratitude Show. My name is Kate Hawkes. I'm the producing artistic director of Red Earth Theatre and I have written down my notes so I don't ramble. Um, I'm really excited to be using this technology for the first time. I'm also scared to death. I've not been able to rehearse this yet. We are usually in the chapel for the Gratitude Show, um, and we couldn't do that this year. So we decided to use this amazing new technology. So we um, send out the script, um, selected performers, sent them the script, and they got to record themselves at home in their own homes, their own environment. And what we asked people to do was just simply be themselves and share their message of gratitude with us all. Um, I'm using Ecamm, and I want to give a big shout out to Steve Sandner, who um, really has taught me off the ledge a couple of times um, as I've tried to make this work. Thank you, Steve. Um, there is a program on the Red Earth, Red Earth Theatre website, if you'd like to check that out while you're watching. Um, we also, um, we've made this whole movie, so after the show, there's a list of credits and some more music and programs, and you can look at the actors and, and see our sponsors and so on and so forth. Um, this is, we are a live theatre, and normally we would be charging you um, a ticket price to see the show. So I'm really hoping that you will go to the Red Earth, Earth Theatre website and make a donation uh, during or after the show. Um, I do want to thank um, a lot of people who helped with this. Um, I'll probably thank them during the show. The way it's going to work, it's been recorded, but I'm going to pop in and out during the show. Um, I'm also like toggling between watching this and watching the screen to go to the video, so please bear with me as I do this. I want to thank our sponsors, the Arizona Community Foundation, Thrivent, Sovereign Laboratories, Salt River Material, and the Northern Arizona Healthcare Foundation, who provide the money for our ongoing veterans project. Um, I think that's all I want to say, so uh, let's begin with the gratitude show. Gratitude unlocks the fullness of life. It turns what we have into enough and more. It turns denial into acceptance, chaos to order, confusion to clarity. It can turn a meal into a feast, a house into a home, a stranger into a friend. Gratitude makes sense of our past, brings peace for today, and creates a vision for tomorrow. Melody Beaton. Welcome. The quiet, round, late afternoon sun is grateful for another day with us by Nancy Lee Melman. It's been listening for hours to our thoughts, memorizing the light we carry. It's had all morning long to look at our faces, stroke our cheeks lightly, absorb our joys and the solid warmth of our bodies, worship the delicate lines at the corners of our mouths, and the trillions of emotions streaking like tiny minuscule comments across our brows. Pat our hands and our chests gently and softly, saying, thank you. As if we too were its beloved house cats, meowing for affection, warm milk, a soft lap, and some tenderness. The late afternoon sun grateful to have been able to quietly spend the entire day with us, cup in hand, drinking in the love we radiate into the cosmos and beyond just by smiling at each other. In a few minutes, we'll pick up a brush, dip into its set of watercolors, and paint our portraits above the town, maybe in oranges or pinks for tonight. 
frame them, sign them, then let them hang peacefully like Madonnas in the sky for about a half an hour or so. Dear Mr. von Fulsdorf, thank you for your champagne. It arrived, I drank it, and I was gayer. Thanks again, my best, Marilyn Monroe. May the gratitude in my heart kiss all the universe. Hafiz. Piglet noticed that even though he had a very small heart, it could hold a rather large amount of gratitude. A. A. Milm. Winnie the Pooh. Hi, I'm Jill Trenholm, and I'm going to sing a song called Open Up Your Heart. I originally wrote this song for my daughter, who was really grumpy one day, and I was trying to snap her out of her grumpy mood by getting her to come and break leaves with me for an elderly couple. Because I think that if you're ever in a grumpy mood, uh, the best thing to do is go do something kind for someone else. So here it is. It's called Open Up Your Heart. You say you're in a bad mood, but you're entitled to it. Well, that may be true from what you've been through, and I don't doubt for a minute you got your head in a dark cloud. But if you think about it, there's an easy way out. Open up your heart, just be nice. Spread a little kindness, don't hesitate. Give something of yourself, lend a hand. Open up your heart and I'm sure you'll understand. Happiness is a choice, yes, you can just flip a switch. It starts with a little smile, a simple smile. You don't need to be tough, as you already know. Just open up your heart and let your goodness show yeah, 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 yeah. Do you, do you, do you, da 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 You're sitting in your dark room and you want to be left alone so you can think about all the things you think are wrong while well, the whole world is waiting for you to come on and give a little joy and share a little love open up your heart just be nice spread a little kindness don't hesitate give something of yourself lend a hand Open up your heart and I'm sure you'll understand. Happiness is a choice, yes, you can just flip a switch and go with a good heart, just go. And you don't need to be tough, as you already know. Just open up your heart and let your goodness show, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you, do you, do you, da, 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 da. Thanks. Thank you so much, Jill Trenholm. You go check out her website. She is an amazing musician and an artist. We have amazing people in our town. Um, I want to remind you um, that uh, you can visit the Red Earth Theatre website and make a donation, check out the program. And also, this show will be re-edited and posted on our YouTube channel in time for Thanksgiving. And now we're going to go back to the show with Kathy Ransom. Excerpt from Health... Thanks, Wow, by Anne Lamott. Recently, I was going to meet my great and amazing friends, Barbara and Susie, for a walk, or rather, a stroll and a roll, as Barbara has Lou Gehrig's disease. As I had pointed out to her, Lou Gehrig's is the one disease you are supposed to actively avoid. But she went ahead and got a full-blown case which has come to mean that she uses a walker, feeding tubes, and a computerized speaking device called Kate that works through her iPad. So Susie drove us to see the Pacific Ocean from above San Francisco's Moraga Steps. I had not yet settled into what is true, that Barbara is 
pretty sick and getting worse. So I sat in a state of jovial nervousness in the back seat, feeling alone and useless and superficial. When we arrived, the view was socked in with fog. We gamely got out of the car anyway, and on top of everything, the Lou Gehrig's, the Vichy Soise fog, my anxious sorrow, there was one of those mean winds that prick your body and your mind and your very being. Plus, they make your skin look terrible. Just ghastly. It was hopeless. I had no choice but to pray. This is all a mess, I said to God. I love these two women so much, and I had such high hopes for connection and joy today. Help! And I got my divine revelation. We all needed to get back into the car immediately. This took a while, as there is no immediately when you're with someone who has ALS. But at some point, warmth and golden sunlight flooded through the car windows, and Susie, Susie drove us around the neighborhood, and in, in, from inside, we took in the brilliant gardens of succulents and crazy, bright, exotic, splashy petals. We found one perfect parking space at the base of the steps, where we could spend as much time as we liked, looking up directly at the magical mosaic on the tall, steep steps. At the bottom, random plump fish in nursery colors swim against the deep blue of the sea, and then to what is above, to the sky and birds and clouds and an exuberant Mexican sun, which curls up into the expansiveness of a starry, starry night. We all got so happy. We talked about real things for an hour. Life, death, families, feeding tubes, faith. I asked Barbara, who does not eat food anymore, what are you most grateful for these days? She typed on her iPad, and Kate's mechanical voice spoke for her. The beauty of nature the birds and flowers, the beauty of friends. This is called radical gratitude in the face of whatever life throws at you. I was so glad and so grateful to be there with them that day. Euphoric. This is a selection from Kurt Vonnegut's last book, entitled A Man Without a Country. I had a good uncle, my late Uncle Alex. He was my father's kid brother, a childless graduate of Harvard who was an honest life insurance salesman in Indianapolis. He was well-read and wise, and his principal complaint about other human beings was that they so seldom noticed it when they were happy. So when we were drinking lemonade under an apple tree in the summer, say, and talking lazily about this and that, almost buzzing like honeybees, Uncle Alex would suddenly interrupt the agreeable blather to exclaim, If this isn't nice, I don't know what is. <laughs> so I do the same now, and so do my kids and grandkids. And I urge you to please notice when you are happy, and exclaim, or murmur, or think at some point, If this isn't nice, I don't know what is. Letter 2 when your job involves leaving the planet and walking on the nearest rocky body, it's important that the people who build your equipment do things the right way. The enormity of the extra vehicle mobility unit engineering team's task, that is building a space suit that kept a man safe and alive on the moon, was not lost on Neil Armstrong who wrote this letter for the 25th anniversary of the lunar landing. To the Emu Gang. I remember noting a quarter century or so ago that an emu was a six-foot Australian flightless bird. I thought that got most of it right. 
it turned out to be one of the most widely photographed spacecraft in history. That was no doubt due to the fact that it was so photogenic. Equally responsible for its success was its characteristic of hiding from view its ugly occupant. Its true beauty, however, was that it worked. It was tough, reliable, and almost cuddly to all of you who made it all that it was. I said a quarter century worth of thanks and congratulations. Sincerely, signed Neil A. Armstrong. I was complaining that I had no shoes till I met a man who had no feet. Confucius. Ryan. Age seven by Mark Doty. Grateful for their tour of the pharmacy, the first grade class has drawn his pictures. Each self-portrait taped to the window glass faces wide to the street, round and available with parallel lines for hair. I like this one best. Brian, whose attenuated name fills a quarter of the frame, stretched beside impossible legs, descending from the ball of his torso, two long arms springing from that same central sphere. He breathes here on his page. It isn't craft that makes this figure come alive. Brian draws just balls and lines in wobbly crayon strokes. Why do some marks seem to thrill with life, possess a portion of nervous energy in their maker's hand? That big curve of a smile reaches nearly to the rim of his face. He holds a towering ice cream, brown spheres teetering on their cone, a soda fountain gift, half the length of him, as if it were a flag of his own country, held high by the unadorned black line of his arm such naked support for so much delight. Artless boy, he's found a system of beauty. He shows us pleasure and what pleasure resists. The ice cream is delicious. He's frail beside his relentless standard. Finding Thanksgiving by Kate Hawkes Newly arrived in the USA, embedded in my new Texan family, the accents, the barbecue place with the bear at the entrance, a family of large hearts and Thanksgiving. Turkey in November, where I come from it's a December bird, everything pumpkin and the pies, my first one made directly from the can into the ready-made crust, my Texan husband laughingly asking where the rest of it was, the milk, the eggs, the spices, Anxious plans for who, where, when and how, travelling before the day, on the day, after the day, how far and for how long. Bemused by football, endlessly playing on the television, amazed at mountains of food endlessly regathered on the tables. Women in the kitchen, men in the television room, children straggling from place to place, finally everyone heaving themselves back home or directly to bed from the sofa. Thanksgiving. Who is the giver? For what the thanks? From where the holiday and for whom? Years later, freed from the family Thanksgiving, my daughter with her dad and the Texas family, I spend all day in Powell's bookstore, far away from the world, surrounded by books and other Thanksgiving refugees. We nod briefly and bury ourselves back in a book with a cup of coffee against the falling, foggy Oregon November night or invited by kindly concerned friends to sit at food-heavy tables with families, football boosting from the television, careful conversations to avoid controversies. It's not Christmas, but closely related. At least they haven't worked out how to make you buy gifts, yet. Asking again, Thanksgiving, who is the giver? For what the thanks? From where the holiday and for whom? Then one year. Cautiously, carefully, consciously invited to sit at the table with some new friends. A quiet gathering arrived. Five couples with long histories. A middle-aged man and his young daughter. A man older than all of us. 
and myself. Peaks of energy, everyone in the kitchen, no television to be seen or heard, laughter at the peas and onion dish, my version. Later, a sought-after favourite, if only to recall the first effort. Food on the table, we sit. The couples side by side, peaceful in their company. The father and his little daughter holding her raggedy Annie. The old man at one end, and myself. Quiet descends, we breathe. Look at the one sitting beside us. One by one we name what our gratitude is. To the reservation who took me in when I was adrift and alone. Gratitude for this child and the chance to be a good father this time. For the patience and kindness you've shown. For the one who stayed with me through the madness. For being here today when so many cannot be. For the buddy who saved my life then lost his. Gratitude for laughter after long nights of despair, for the stories dug up from the blackness and then given away to the light, for all the tears shed that we shared, for the children and grandchildren I've had, for the hope that lights from your love. Thank you for being my dad. I don't have to ask who is the giver, for what the thanks, from where the holiday and for whom. I have been privileged to meet with gratitude, sitting right here at this table with people whose experience of gratitude is profound, wordless, and painful. Scarred with deep courage, knowing life is a precarious for night thread, they rescued this particular holiday with gratitude for every heartbeat shed. My gratitude is for every heart told story every listener in compassion, every life expansion, every hope and love whispering gratitude's confession. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving from one little Australian to all my lovely American friends. Dear Henry, I have just seen our picture, Breakfast at Tiffany's, this time with your score. A movie without music it's a little bit like an aeroplane without fuel. However beautifully the job is done, we're still on the ground and in a world of reality. Your music has lifted us all up and sent us soaring. Everything we cannot say with words or show with action, you have expressed for us. You have done this with so much imagination, fun, and beauty. You are the hippest of cats and the most sensitive of composers. Thank you, dear Hank. Lots of love, Audrey Hepburn. Audrey Hepburn in a letter to Henry Mancini. Predominant feeling is one of gratitude. I have loved and been loved. I've been given much and I have given something in return. Above all, I have been a sentient being a thinking animal on this beautiful planet, and that in itself has been an enormous privilege and adventure. Oliver Sacks. I'm Jeannie Carroll, and I'll be singing Gracias a la Vida by Violette Barra. <laughs> Gracias a la vida que me ha dado tanto, me dio dos luceros que cuando los abro, perfecto distingo lo negro del blanco y en el alto cielo su fondo estrellado y en las multitudes el hombre yo amo gracias a la vida que me ha dado tanto me ha dado el sonido y el abecedario con él las palabras que pienso y declaro madre mío hermano y luz alumbrando vida del alma del que estoy amando. Gracias a la vida que me ha dado tanto, me dio el corazón y agita 
termina su marco cuando miro el fruto del cerebro humano cuando miro el bueno tan lejos del malo cuando miro el fondo de tus ojos claros gracias a la vida que me ha dado tanto me ha dado la risa y me ha dado el llanto así yo distingo dicha de quebranto los dos materiales que forman mi canto y el canto de todos que es mi propio canto gracias a la vida que me ha dado tanto gracias a todos and I am back I am loving how all these performers found their own space. I said to people, just do it where you are. Do it in your home. We're regular people like all of you trying to work our way through this. And while we miss performing live, we're so grateful we have an opportunity to share what we love with you through this medium. So it's been wonderful to me to see the videos coming in um, and see how people chose to show who they are in their real lives, not just as actors on a stage. Um, we are now going to go to our next piece, which is by Nancy Ruby and read by Joan Westmoreland. Fourth season by Nancy Ruby. Forgive the shadow its length as the days become less and the nights are imbued with joyous reverie of kindness and gratitude. Embrace the harvest's abundance, make a home for the heart, baked apples and stew, and enter the darkness with gentle gifting of kindness and gratitude. Forgive the shadow its length, let sweetness and comfort lead the days as the earth travels brings a new phase and madrigal choirs usher us toward the final long night. Bring knowledge of the dark to bear, its eternal depth understood in order for the day to renew the joyous reverie of kindness and gratitude. Once upon a time, 1989, a little girl named Amy sent a bottle of colored water, oil, and glitter to Roald Dahl, who knew right away that this was a dream in a bottle inspired by his book, The BFG. In response, the author penned this short note to his seven-year-old fan. Dear Amy, I must write a special letter and thank you for the dream in the bottle. You are the first person in the world who has sent me one of these, and it intrigued me very much. I also liked the dream. Tonight, I shall go down to the village and blow it through the bedroom window of some sleeping child and see if it works. With love from Roll Dahl. If you look to others for fulfillment, you will never be fulfilled. If your happiness depends on money, you'll never be happy with yourself. Be content with what you have. Rejoice in the way things are. When you realize there's nothing lacking, the world belongs to you. Lao Tzu. Our next piece is from Shakespeare. I thought, I wonder if there's anything I can find from Shakespeare about gratitude. And good old Shakespeare did not let me down. I reached out to Scott Cooper and he said, yep, I have just the piece. So this is from As You Like It. Duke Senor and his brethren have been banished to the forest of Arden, but they find it more real, honest and true than the court itself. So the banishment that was meant to punish instead 
It does this. Now, my co-mates and brothers in exile, hath not old custom made this life more sweet than that of painted pomp? Are not these woods more free from peril than the envious court? Here feel we but the penalty of Adam, the season's difference as the icy fang and churlish chiding of the winter's wind, which, when it bites and blows upon my body, even till I shrink with cold, I smile and say, this is no flattery. These are counselors that feelingly persuade me what I am. Sweet are the uses of adversity, which, like the toad, ugly and venomous, wears yet a precious jewel in his head. And this, our life exempt from public haunt, finds tongues in trees, books in the running brooks, sermons in stones, and good in everything. I would not change it. As if to demonstrate an eclipse by Billy Collins. I pick an orange from a wicker basket and place it on the table to represent the sun. Then down on the other end, a blue and white marble that becomes the earth. And nearby, I lay a little white moon of an aspirin. I go to the cabinet, open a bottle of wine, then I sit back in the chair, a benevolent god presiding over a miniature creation myth. And I began to sing. <laughs> oh, a homemade canticle of thanks for this perfect little arrangement, for not making the earth too hot or too cold, for making it spin not too fast or too slow so that the grove of orange trees and the owl become possible. Not to mention the rolling wave, the play of clouds, the geese in flight, and the zee of lightning over a dark midnight lake. Then I fill my glass again, and I give thanks for the trout, the oak, the yellow feather. Singing the room full of shadows as sun and earth and moon circle one another in their impeccable orbs. As I get once more cockeyed with gratitude. <laughs> Hi, I am Vismaya or Ingrid Hegelberg. I live in Sedona, the city of light, you may call it. Well, I came here uh, several years ago, and I was in a pretty dark space, but I came here to this amazing place and was filled with light. So I would like to sing you a song that I dedicated to Sedona called Living in the Light. It's on YouTube if you're ever curious. And, uh, you know, I just wanted to tell you that right now, you know as well as I do that we are living in very difficult times, very polarized times, really. And, you know, the, the neighbors don't even want to talk to each other if they don't have the same political views, which is sad, isn't it? So I think that we should focus and be grateful that we are here on this planet, beautiful. There's so much to be grateful for. I'm grateful for all my wonderful friends here all over the world, uh, to my husband John there. And and here is my song called Living in the Light. I sing it just a cappella for you. So have a happy Thanksgiving and be grateful, okay? Whenever I talk Take a walk in town, looking at people brings me down. I search a smile, a happy face, but I must find another place. I wanna go where 
never peep a smile. Trust my heart and rest a while. I wanna be where my heart can dance. The love still has another chance. Living in the light, I don't wanna fight. I just wanna see you smile at me. Living in the light, everything is right. Love is what we need, the air we breathe. I wanna leave the darkness behind and live my life in the sunshine. I wanna be like a bird in the sky, fly into the sky so high. I wanna go where the river flows, trust my heart where it may go. I wanna be where my heart can dance, where love still has another chance. Living in the light, I don't wanna fight. I just want to see you smile at me, living in the light, everything is right, love is what we need, the air we breathe. Gratitude by Mary Oliver What did you notice? The dew snail, the low-flying sparrow, the bat on the wind in the dark, big chested geese in the V of sleekest performance, the soft toad patient in the hot sand, the sweet hungry ants, the uproar of mice in the empty house, the tin music of the cricket's body, the blouse of the goldenrod. What did you hear? The thrush greeting the morning, the little bluebirds in their hot box, the salty talk of the wren, then the deep cup of the hour of silence. What did you admire? The oaks letting down their dark and hairy fruit, the carrot rising in its elongated waist, the onion sheet after sheet curved inward to the pale green wand, at the end of summer the brassy dust, the almost liquid beauty of the flowers, then the ferns scrawned black by the frost. What astonished you? The swallows making their dip and turn over the water. Hmm. What would you like to see again? My dog, her energy and exuberance, her, her willingness, her language beyond all nimbleness of tongue, her recklessness, her loyalty, her sweetness, her sturdy legs, her curled black lip, her snap. What was the most Tender. Queen Anne's lace with its parsnip root, the everlasting in its bonnets of wool, the kinks and turns of the Tupelo's body, the tall blank banks of sand, the clam clamped down. What was most wonderful? The sea and its wide shoulders, the sea and its triangles, the sea lying back on its long athlete's spine. What did you think was happening? The green breast of the hummingbird, the, the eye of the pond, the wet face of the lily, the bright puckered knee of the broken oak, the red tulip of the fox's mouth, the upswing, the downpour, the frayed sleeve of the first snow. So the gods shake us from our sleep. I want to thank um, the Gallagher's for creating that really beautiful, beautiful piece. Um, I want to remind you, these are, these are performers. We are generally used to doing things live, and we are adapting ourselves to this new reality. Um, and we assume it's temporary. We will be back live soon. Um, so I'd like you to please continue to support Red Earth Theatre so we can come back um, and we can keep our things in storage until such time. So when you can, make a donation. And meanwhile, I'm going to go back to Kathy, who I just rudely interrupted. Dear ben, I am thankful to have been blessed with a boy. Even if I was sure, I wouldn't know what to do with one. I am thankful for your fierce hugs even if I have to bribe you for them. I am thankful for the kind of friend you are, both to your schoolmates and to your brother and sister. I am thankful for how concerned you are for other people, sometimes even more than yourself. I am thankful that you love peanut butter so much. 
because without it, you would exist almost solely on carbs. I am thankful that your aim in the bathroom has improved. Kind of. I am thankful that you resemble me and I didn't completely lose the DNA wars. I am thankful that you love it when I visit your classroom. And I am thankful for your infectious giggle. I am so utterly thankful to be your mother. Always. Jill Smokler, mother of three in Baltimore, who blogs about motherhood at scarymommy.com. Beauty. What is beauty for my eyes to see but a bird in flight to its favorite tree? There he sings his special song while looking for love in the pale early dawn. Then he notices on a branch up above sits another bird also looking for love. They sing to each other all day until night and take off together in a long courtship flight. My eyes fill with tears from happiness to be. My heart fills with joy because that's beauty to me. Poem by Steve Janess. Gratitude for the world around us that we see every day. Letter six. Dear God, thank you for the baby brother, but what I prayed for was a puppy. Joyce. Let us rise up and be thankful for if we didn't learn a lot today, at least we learned a little. And if we didn't learn a little, at least we didn't get sick. And if we got sick, at least we didn't die. So, let us all be thankful. Buddha. The Thanksgivings. We return thanks to our mother, the earth, which sustains us. We return thanks to the rivers and streams which supply us with water. We return thanks to all herbs which furnish medicines for the cure of our diseases. We return thanks to the moon and stars which have given us their light when the sun was gone. We return thanks to the sun that has looked upon the earth with a beneficent eye. Lastly, we return thanks to the Great Spirit in whom is embodied all goodness, and who directs all things for the good of her children. The Iroquois. If the only prayer you said in your whole life was, thank you, that would suffice. Meister Eckert. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. And 
my love is strong Here there is no wrong Together we should go Until we die Inspiration Is what you are to me Inspiration Look, see
would still be loving. Wow, thank you, Ian Patterson, for that beautiful reminder of the lovely place where we are living right now. Um, we have one more um, piece in this uh, show. It's our traditional ending, What a Wonderful World. Uh, but before we go to that, um, I want to thank everybody who participated in this. I want to note we had two new first-time performers with Red Earth Theatre. We have Steve Janess, who has been... Uh, stage manager, making props, making stuff work for us. And he said, can I do my poem? And I was so happy that he offered that. So we had him. And then we have little Maya Rodriguez, who is Jeannie Carroll's granddaughter. So she joined us too. Um, we're also wondering what to do with Christmas, Carol. We do that each year. Um, I don't think we're going to be able to do it again, um, I get because of the same reasons. Um, indoors, uh, we usually do it at the chapel at Talakipaki. So if you liked this idea of sort of doing combined video um, live, uh, let me know. Just uh, email Red Earth or make a note um, in the comments. Um, and I want to say I have incredible respect to be for people who do editing. Oh, my goodness. I've spent, I don't know, 20 hours doing this. And next time I'm going to find someone who really knows what they're doing. Um, but thank you so much for all of your support. Um, support the arts where you are. And once more, if you're able to make a donation to Red Earth, we truly appreciate it because we will be here live before too long. And now please join us for What a Wonderful World. Stay through after that. We have, you can meet the cast. We have uh, photos of them. You can look at the program. You can look at our sponsors. And um, there's some beautiful music underneath that from Ian again. So thank you, everyone. And let's sing What a Wonderful World. see trees of green, red roses too, I see them bloom for me and you, and I think to myself, what a wonderful world, I see skies of blue, Clouds of white, the bright blessed day, the dark sacred night, and I think to myself, what a wonderful world. The colors of the rainbow, so pretty in the sky. They're also on the faces of people go by. I see friends shaking hands, saying, how do you do? They're really saying, I love you. I hear babies cry. I watch them grow. They'll learn much more. Than I'll ever know, and I think to myself, what a wonderful world. The colors of the rainbow, so pretty in the sky, are also on the faces of people passing by. I see friends shaking hands, saying, how do you do? They're really saying, I love you. I hear babies cry, I watch them grow. They'll learn much more than I'll ever know. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world, yeah, mm -hmm. yes, I think to myself. myself.
Everybody, thank you so much for watching our show tonight, wherever you watched it from and whenever you're watching it. Maybe you're watching it a year from when we did it. But gratitude remains the same, whatever our time of day or our location. We have really enjoyed doing this. It's what we do as performing artists, musicians, and actors. We come together in community, and that in itself is an act of gratitude. So even though we can't see you, we know you're out there, and we thank you for joining our community. And I want to introduce all these fabulous performers. So I'm going to say their names, and they're going to wave in their little boxes, and Vismaya's going to sit still. Aren't you, Vismaya? Yes. Okay. Let's start with this, Vismaya. That's Viz Maya. And we have Lisa. And we have Tara and Steve. And we have Jill Trenholm. And we have Ian Patterson. And Kathy Ransom. And Jeannie Carroll. And Jeannie, where's your small cohort? Can we bring Maya on? And we have Maya. She's our youngest and newest member. There's little Maya. And we have Michael and Candace Gallagher. And we have Scott Coopwood. And we have Nancy Lee Melman. And we have Joan Westmoreland. I thank you all. And everyone, I want to remind you, um, please go to the website, www.redearththeatre.org and make a donation. Normally we would be collecting money from you at the door as you came in live. We're going to trust you to go and make a donation to the Red Earth Theatre website. There's a handy dandy little PayPal link. I also want to ask you to please support whatever performing artists or groups you have in your community. We're here and we're going to be here through thick and thin and we'll be here when all this ends. But we need to stay here until then. Um, and I want to ask you to please remember gratitude. If we have gratitude, we have hope. If we have gratitude, we have love. If we have gratitude, we can get up in the morning. And that's what we need to do. So thank you everybody for being here and we'll see you soon. Bye everybody.